like Let me call the Berkeley City Planning Commission to order for its regular meeting of Tuesday, January the 27th, 2015. Would you all please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. Could I have a roll call, please? Smith? Here. Morell? Here. Richardson? Here. Buckler? Here. Pop? Here. Murad? Here. Shadel? Here. Tangeri? Here. Burnett? Present. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Murad. Is there a second? Second. Second. Commissioner Morell. Any discussion on the agenda this evening? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Tangeri? Yes. Smith? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Pop? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Shadel? Yes. Murad? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Now I entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the November 25th, 2014 meeting of the Planning Commission. So motion made by Commissioner Martin Smith. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Murad. Is there any discussion on the minutes of November the 25th? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Murad? Yes. Smith? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Pop? Yes. Shadel? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Burnett? Yes. I gave everybody. Yes. <laughs> everybody? We get everybody? Got everybody now. Thank you. Now I entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the December the 9th, 2014 meeting of the Planning Commission. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Richardson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Pott. Any discussion on the minutes of December the 9th? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Shadel? Yes. Smith? Yes. Murad? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Pop? Yes. Thank you. Tangieri? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Communications? Uh, a few things. You've got DDA minutes. You have a brochure on Michigan Association of Planning training. If anybody's interested, let me know. And you have a couple of PowerPoints that used a lot of toner, but I thought they were really good. I had gone to a transportation one-day conference uh, before the holidays in Lansing put on by the Michigan Association of Planning. And these are my two favorite uh, sessions, so you have the PowerPoints from them. And then you all have a copy, a uh, uh -huh. bound copy, okay. somewhat, of the uh, sign and zoning ordinance. Uh, any of the ones that you have at home, pitch them. And this one is the, the most up to date for your reference. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, at this point in time, I'll entertain citizens' comments. Any citizen who would care to address the Planning Commission on any topic not on our agenda may step up to the microphone, state your name and city of residence, and you may have the floor. I'll remind citizens they'll have an opportunity to participate in the discussions as we move through our meeting. Hearing no citizens' comments at this time, I'll close that part of the meeting and we'll move right on into the regular order of business. Uh, item number one is site plan review, SP0814, Jeff Hutchison for BAPG LLC, 3387 through 3391 12 mile. Southeast corner of 12 mile in Buckingham is requesting site plan approval for a facade change in site work. This was before the Planning Commission last month um, and there were a number of items and it was postponed to a date certain. I did speak with Jeff Hutchison, who's the project manager for the project, and he advised that they were working through some interior layout floor plan that, were going, that was going to end up affecting what the outside of the building looked like, and so he requested a postponement to February. So, at this time, I'll entertain a motion from the Planning Commission to postpone to February. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morrell. 
I move we postpone SP08-14 uh, to uh, our February meeting. Is there a second to the motion? Second. second. <coughs> kind of a tie. Who is she it there? Gotcha. She, 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 one of them. Shadow? Pretty sure. That's my okay. pad here. Yes, so. that's what I said. So. Yep. Okay. It's all right. Ready? Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Richardson? Yes. Murad? Yes. Shadel? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Smith? Yes. And Gary? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Top? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Okay. Item two. Item two is site plan review SP0115, Berkeley Holding, LLC, 3044 12 mile, north side of 12 mile, between Robina and Griffith, is requesting site plan approval for a facade change. Is the petitioner here this evening? You want to sort it out? Will you state your name? Yep, Sirota. Pardon? Yep, Sirota. Yep, Sirota. You want to sort of describe the uh, project for us, please? Well, basically, they're taking down the green canopy, removing the drive it, and putting a new storefront in. Questions from the Planning Commission for Mr. Sirota. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin Smith. Um, what materials above the uh, storefront framing? Let's drive it. That's also drive it. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there something important about the six feet of uh, panels and drive it on each side? Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask is 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 our ordinance calls for forty feet of glass, forty to eighty. Not feet. I apologize. 40%. Forty to eighty percent of glass, and as as um, this was calculated calculated out as thirty six percent. Is there something? Uh, uh, and, and we have the right to to adjust that, and that's fine. Is there something important about the six feet on each side, and why we couldn't get a forty percent uh, glass? The, the tenant wanted that wall space and they're going to have uh, the computer toys in there and so they didn't want any more uh, glass in that on the front of the store they wanted the wall space inside it has a hard ceiling on it with uh, you know special lighting it's a sh it's a, like a showroom in that, it, but that, it's an interior showroom okay so that's all existing well it's, it's in now the, the ceilings in, the walls are in and okay what is that backup material for those panels? It's plywood. I mean, the, the frame, is it? Is it oh, oh, you mean the metal at the bottom, the six feet high? <clears> well, no, what's the, uh, uh, the, what's the wall construction at that point? It's metal studs with, uh, it's an existing wall. Okay. Ex cutting through an existing wall to put in the storefront. Okay, so it's existing light gauge studs? Well, they're heavy gauge, but they're metal. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just I just bring that up because we you know we do this all the time and it's about ten percent and uh, um, you know we we're we're up against this all the time and it's no big deal to me. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that fact that uh, we're about ten percent short. Um, and if it, if it's a function of what they want to do on the interior, okay. Um, What's the base? I see on either side of the, the at the storefront, the, the, it looks like the cement panels, the fiber cement panels and this metal trim yes. go down to grade. On either side, it looks like there's a, a, a base of some sort. What would that material be? The metal base, you have to keep that uh, concrete paneling of four inches off the wet. If it gets uh, wet, it can decompose. Okay, so should that also be across underneath the storefront then? Is it the same panels? The, pa the panels under the storefront are, you know, they're a different material. So okay, those are fiber cement? Yes. Well, then what are the panels? 
it's a different mixture. That's the only difference. Because, yeah, it also says fiber cement. Right. Okay, but that is a different type of fiber right. cement we, panel? We, we submit, submitted a, a copy of the panels that are on the side. There. Uh, I have a submittal of the trim pieces. I don't have a submittal of the panel. I didn't submit the other. It's, it's there now. It's been there for 20 years. Right now, it's, it's a brown panel that's on the store right now. And it's in good shape. Oh, so that's staying. We're reusing on either side. it. Okay, okay, that wasn't clear in the drawings. Okay. No, it's, I guess. So you're reusing, reusing the existing. I'm just trying to understand what's here. That's why, oh, no, why no, we asked. That, that's, uh, reusing, oh, so you're reusing the existing panels in relatively good shape. No, in, or in, in good shape. shape. It's kind of amazing. Why well, will cross it off and say in perfect shape. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, just so you understand, I, oh, no. If, no, I we, if we don't know what we're looking at, or me, I, I, clear, I have difficulty. That. I apologize. Yeah. That's okay. You made that. You made it very clear. Um, do we have colors? The, the color that's on the uh, the colored brochure is what they're presently proposing. Which color? Gray or white? It's a gray. Okay. And that's the gray of the panels. Yes. Mm hmm What about the drive at the EIFS? The drive it's just beige. Standard drive it beige? Yeah, standard drive it beige is covered America. <laughs> okay. Uh, any exterior lighting planned? I know there's a canopy there now. It probably has lighting in it. I forgot to look it's up. It's all going to be removed. There's, it's, okay. it's just lit from the inside to draw people into their showroom. Okay, so there's no lit sign or anything? No. Well. That's a separate that's, permit. I'm just asking. That's a separate. The, the tenant is uh, really up in the air what they want to okay. do for a sign. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I think I, I know what I'm looking at now. Okay. Other comments from the Planning Commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, these Mr. little uh, Go ahead. Uh, kind of scribbly things in the uh, drive it Nothing. It's panels. Nothing. The tenant wanted to discuss with their, that's part of their signage. I gotcha. So whatever it is, I nothing's yet proposed for that. It's just sort of no, to say that something's going to be there. They don't know what they want to do there at this point. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> regarding the uh, window frontage, I understand the uh, six feet. Could you possibly get that extra four percent to get to forty percent by going up? Not really. It's a, it's already at the interior ceiling. Oh, okay. I gotcha. That's almost true. Other comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin. <clears throat> Mr. Tangeri brought up uh, the thing about these little squiggly things. Uh, what they have is they, they make these uh, animated uh, computer things like toys, and they were thinking as part of their signage, they would have something like that, some metal piece, but that's their signage, okay. it has nothing to do with it. So will it be projecting far out onto the? No. Okay, so it's pretty flat, a flat yeah. sculpture-y type of sculpture, thing. Sculpture, right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Other comments from the Planning Commission? What's the desire of the Planning Commission? Rush. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Martin Smith. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, approve this. However, I want to ask the Planning Commission if anybody does have an issue with the 10% less class area. Uh, I, I, I do not, given. Mr. Richardson? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I do not. No, Ms. Pop? Fine. Right. Fine. Mr. Morrell? I think we're seeing a net improvement here, so I, I really have no, uh, I have no problem. Ms. Shadle? No issues. Ms. Buckler? No issues. Mr. I Tan. agree with Commissioner Morrell uh, about the improvement, and I, I think we're, we're only 4% shy of our, our minimum, so it's, it's fairly nominal. 
No, it's ten percent actually. But, really? yeah, but still, I'm. Are you gonna make the motion? Make a motion to approve. Uh, Four percentage points. Yeah. Let me get it. <clears throat> Site plan zero one dash zero five. One five. Hmm? One five. That is a one. Thank you. <clears throat> Site plan zero one dash one five. Thank you. No conditions. No, the only condition I would have had would be the glass area, and since it seems to be a consensus, that's not going to be an issue. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Second, second by Commissioner Mary. Discussion now on the motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morrell. Just a quick question, and I didn't see any comments from any of the departments on it. There is a note on the bottom of this drawing that says the fiber cement panels encroach an inch and a quarter out of the public right of way. Mm hmm. And I was just making sure that. That isn't going to prove. We, you know, I don't want to go ahead and approve this and find out that's an issue and have to have them come back. <clears throat> no. Miss Hanson. No, I don't. We. We're all, if we're just going to be okay having cinder block buildings that are right on the right of way, then that's what we're going to end up hap yeah. having. So I think we need to be okay with a little bit of an encroachment to have okay. a better looking facade. Okay. Mr. Moore. All I have. feeling was that is existing. So. No, I understand. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may. I went out to the side. They already encroach, so it would yeah. be, yeah. and it's been there for whatever. Right. So, yep. so otherwise, I. off the one encroachment and putting back yes. into one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess I, my, my thought, that's why I didn't bring it up, because yeah. I bring, okay. we, we do wanna, talk about that all the time. Yeah, I know we do. No, now, I, did, I six, didn't bring it up. If it's a six-inch encroachment or eight-inch, well, that starts yeah. getting interesting. Now, the drive it above the EIFS. I don't like the word drive it, but that's okay. The oh, EIFS yeah. above encroaches two inches, but that's six foot four above the uh, the, the the sidewalk. So a guy like me is not going to smack his head on that. So. To me, it's like a anyway, grandfathering sure. situation. Yeah, no. yeah, I'd have to sort of. Okay. <laughs> All right. No other. Any no other comments? Okay. Ms. Vanson, could I have a roll call, please? Yes. Pop. Yes. Smith? Yes. Buckler? Yes. Shadel? Yes. Morrell? Yes. Murad? Yes. Richardson? Yes. Tingari? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Good to go. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Item number two. Item number three is discussion regarding valet parking ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry, three. That's all right. Feels like two. Yeah. Okay, everybody has received this. The city council reviewed this at a work session at their last meeting and um, they've asked the Downtown Development Authority and us to take a look at it. And if there's any questions or comments on it to make them tonight, because I believe council's going to take this up on the regular meeting on Monday, coming up on whatever it is, February the 2nd, right? That would be February the 2nd, yes. I wasn't yeah. sure what their time frame was. But I, I thought they were okay. on the move forward with it. So. so, folks, have you had a chance? I hope you've all read it and had a chance. Comments? I have a question. Premier Red. So this is for a business that will be staging their uh, valet in the public right away. So as an example, a, comp a place like Omara's, if they wanted to do valet in their own parking lot, this ordinance wouldn't affect them? My understanding is, is that at least the ordinance that I've reviewed this some time ago, that it actually precluded precluded valets operating in the public right-of-way. The permittee shall at no time unless expressly authorized in the permit park or leave standing in, in the public right-of-way use the public right-of-way for vehicle pickup and drop-off locations. Okay. So this would be for um, a business that is either operating valet or is subletting essentially that service and is contracting for that service to make sure it's operating in accordance with the conditions of a business license and this ordinance. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I... Ms. Buckler. Can you explain that again? 
they're, they, they will be permitted to operate in the right of way, no. correct? No. 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 Okay, because no. your definition says that a permit T means any person permitted by the city to operate a valet parking service, service who uses the public right of way That's for pick up, drop off, or movement of vehicles to be valet parking. Well, I think you'd have to use them to move them probably yeah. if you're just, just going to, move to the operate vehicles. valet yeah. within your parking lot. I've misunderstood. I thought you meant if, say, O'Mara's was going to use the guild crafter, guild crafters quilt shop for extra parking right. then if they're going to go across the right of way to get to another parking lot then they would need to right. operate so just this. parking within their own private property correct. they would not need a permit correct okay thank you okay. yes yeah that's that's what i was going for. i'm sorry okay. Okay. i'm sorry i was All unclear right. mr. mr richardson um ms vance i have a couple of questions on the I will try to answer them. It's not my ordinance. The city attorney drafted it, so I will do my best. A couple of comments, a couple of questions. Um, has, first question is, was any consideration given to including the amount of the permit fee in the ordinance? Usually the, the fees are not considered as part of the ordinance. They're usually set by a motion. Um, Probably if council was going to adopt this ordinance, the next item would be a motion on the agenda, setting, changing the fee schedule to include this. Okay. Um, motions only need to be read once um, and go into effect um, at a particular date, as opposed to an ordinance, takes two readings if you want to amend it, and then it goes into effect 30 days later. So a motion's a bit more flexible if you want to change fees in the future. Um. On um, section 3702, uh, sub 6, um, it talks about the uh, applicant's representative um, will be available. It, that language implies that there's a requirement that there be a designated representative um, available to public safety or, or otherwise to the city but it doesn't it doesn't really clearly state that uh, so I, I guess I would I would recommend that it just flat out say the uh, operator shall designate so and so and provide contact information um, also on um, subparagraph one same section um, just a small point, but uh, uh, business. I think I think you'd probably be well served by making that plural because it could be more than one business. Um, what else? Um, the um, license doesn't have any time limit on it apparently an indefinite uh, indefinite license and it can only be revoked pursuant to 3704 would that be would that be correct that I'm not certain of okay um, um, give me a minute I'll try to I, I I just do you know if any consideration was given to making them one-year licenses renewable or the I, I don't know. The city does not have uh, other than rental licenses okay. that need to be renewed. Um, and we do have a liquor. Anybody that serves liquor in the city does have an annual um, inspection that um, they pay for. As f other than rentals, though, it's a one-time license fee in the city of Berkeley. Um, so I'm, I, I'd have to look into what the thinking was, if they're gonna do it like snow plowing where it's seasonal or ice cream vendors are seasonal, or well, if they I, were I, thinking more like a business, which means once a business is in and they comply, they're allowed to continue. Well, it's just that this is a business that is gonna routinely utilize uh, public rights of way. It's gonna, it's gonna employ probably a a number of different drivers on a short-term basis it's going to take some active supervision so I, I I'm just kind of thinking it might be prudent to at least consider making it a renewable license so you mm -hmm. can kind of <clears throat> keep track of the performance sure. uh, uh, under this um, and by the same token um, in section 7 30704 
it provides for an appeal if your license is revoked. I'm, I'm just wondering if any consideration was given there to a time limit for filing that appeal, like 30 days or something like that. This is a open-ended, so theoretically you could come a, one year later and say, oh, I'd like to appeal that. So okay. um, I think maybe tightening up that little, little bit would be, would be uh, worth considering. Okay. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. I, I guess in the definitional section, I was um, kind of wondering why we had separate definitions for permittee and operator, since they seem to be one and the same. But um, that's that's probably not a, a major concern I guess maybe if they're looking at the ordinance again they might want to just look and make sure the definitions are as succinct and clear as they could be um, that's all I'll I make think. a note of it mr. chair it's Mark uh, Amy, do you know if they envision that the business would apply as the permittee and that they would hire whatever Valley service that was needed or is it the valley service operator did you envision would be the permittee? My understanding would be it would be the valet parking service itself. Um, as I know, that's been a concern is who exactly is parking cars. So my second question is, could I open a valet parking service in front of a business that didn't want one? Well, you can't operate on the public right of way. You Unless it's expressly authorized in the permit on page two under oh, I see. 703A. <coughs> Unless, it's, yes, I see what you're saying. Um, so if I catch on well, a bad day and you authorize, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying. Yes, I suppose, in theory, if you wanted to operate on the public right of way in front of a business, and the city thought it was a good idea to give you a permit to do that. And you had all your ducks in a row on where you were going to put those cars, then yes, in theory, you could do that. Mr. Chairman. Well, it's Ms. Buckle. I'll have oh, I'm done. Mr. Morrell. Does it say someplace that you can't do that? Right. Mr. Morrell. Since, <laughs> since item 30A number two says you can't pick up or drop off in the public right away. The only place you can do that would be on private property, which ostensibly would be owned by the business. So it seems to me, and since you have to have a signed statement from the owners or managers of the business right. to be served requesting their services, right. I don't see that as being an issue. Okay, right? no, I, yeah. Now, yeah. an issue that I do have is that, again, back to this definition of permittee, says that a permittee who uses the public right of way for pick up, drop off, or movement, and then over here it says, oh, by the way, you can't use the public right of way to pick up or drop off. Unless it's authorized, excuse me. And, and again, I, I suppose, yeah, you could be authorized by the permit. To, I, th that's confusing as all get out. That, that it seems like one place says you, you can do it and one place says you can't. And I don't know if there's a way to clean it up, okay. but but I've yet to give you the, the, the capper on the confused as heck statement here. Um, on page three, item D, valet parking attendance, the permittee shall not allow vehicular and pedestrian traffic on the public right of way to not, not be, be impeded <laughs> by the valet parking service. So it's a typo. I'm stumped, I, but I didn't know which way they were going with it. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed double to impede. Negative. I don't think you're supposed to impede vehicular pedestrian okay. traffic the double, the, the by operating. The, the gist is that valet parking attendants aren't supposed to block traffic, either pedestrian okay. or vehicular. All right, I got it. Okay, so that one, yeah, that one needs. That's to be, a typo. That one gotcha. needs to be tweaked up a little bit. Double negative. Got it. Um, I did submit when this went around via email. I actually did submit a bunch of comments. You did, and I forwarded I it to the did. city no, attorney. Yeah, yeah, and the attorney yeah. uh, now um, recognized your comments. Good. Okay. I don't. Yeah, but so I don't have any more. Okay. Other chair. comments. Uh, Mr. Ten Um Yeah, to go back to the 
conflict between the definition of permittee and uh, section 3703-2A2. 703, um, <coughs> oh. 703-A2, yeah. Gotcha, um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some changes you could make to the definition of permittee uh, that would uh, help to reduce the conflict. Um, perhaps something along the lines of who uses private property or, or where permitted the public right of way, and I think that would cover the conflict. Okay. Um, I, I'm assuming that the exemption for the public right of way is primarily aimed at Woodward Avenue where portions of the parking are actually in the public right of way. You've got those like in front of Crispelli's, there's those parallel spaces, that's in the public right of way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm assuming that that's <coughs> primarily what yeah, I don't, I don't know. There. And that would be, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Martin. That would be, I think, a case by case basis mm -hmm. as to where this is located yeah. right, in the city of Berkeley, right? Yeah, I think the idea would be uh, <coughs> Public safety is reviewing the permit. They're going to look at what's going to not impede the pedestrian traffic mm -hmm. and the vehicular traffic and what's going to make the most sense from a safety standpoint. And if the right-of-way is going to get the job done, then I think they would allow it. If it's not going to get the job done, then other plans need to be made. Regarding the public right-of-way, um, I didn't notice anything that, perhaps I just missed it, but I didn't notice anything that prohibited an operator from using a marked parallel parking space for um, the operation of a, of a valet parking service. It's part of a right of way. What's that? It's part of a right of way. It is part of a right of way, yeah. Can't do it. Yeah. I'm just thinking at, for if you've got this uh, ex, um, exception or if you're expressly authorized to use the right of way and you decide you're going to use a parallel parking space for pickup and drop off is what I'm saying. I would that okay. that also would be subject to the permit I would suppose is that that would be part yeah. you'd have to discuss it in advance with public safety. You'd have you know. to have a location marked right. out if before you were given this this exception I'm assuming. Like where a loaf does. If if you were to look at ignoring Woodward permit if you were to look try and apply this ordinance to 12 mile road. Or Coolidge. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that if if a, uh, a service wants to run valley parking on 12 mile they're going to have to they're going to have to appeal to the city to use the, the right of way for queuing for pickup for drop off for all of those things except for parking and and they would have to be successful in that in order to be able to do it right um, whether or not to be granted is another question but but I think if from a fairness standpoint you're absolutely right they they could they would have to use you know if you were to look at like the frontage along the theater if there was something there that wanted to valet park, they would have to use the, the, the parallel parking right. along 12 mile in order to do so. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Other comments? Okay. Okay. I will let the city attorney know. Thank you. All right. <coughs> well, was oh. Pardon? Sure. Step up, state your name and residence. Hello, I'm Tara Hayes from Berkeley. Um, so first, I too um, had questions about the definition of the permittee because there are several places. So I just wanted to reaffirm that as well as the fee question that Mr. Richardson brought up because it actually will specify in section 3704 that it was set forth in this article, but it oh. isn't. Okay. okay. Um, so then um, my next point is actually a request. So if I can approach, can I give you a copy of what I would like to have added to this? Sure. Sure. Thanks. Oh. 
Okay, so when this handout comes around, you'll see I kept the ordinance article exactly as stated, and then I did a period of ellipsis to get us to section 3703, which is the one I'm talking about. And then I have in bold the changes I've made. So I've added a D here, and then I changed the next two to E and F, which would be subsequent from there. So my request here is that um, in addition to these operating requirements, that in designating parking valet only, which is something that is happening in the city, um, that the permittee shall be allowed to designate as valet only only those parking lots and or spaces which exceed the number of off-street parking spaces that section 138.219 requires the permittee to have for its patrons. And um, I'm requesting this on, because as the valet has come up several times. Red coat has been the example that's been given as to how people utilize valet parking. And red coat, of course, does in the back mark that single lot as valet only also, but they do have all of the spots that exceed what they own because they own all the lots around. And then they also have a shared parking agreement with Sprint and they pay for the lighting, et cetera, there. So it seems that what we have right now is that the valet option has been utilized to meet the required parking, and yet there isn't always a parking. So in terms of whether or not this is appropriate, I don't know, but I'm asking nonetheless. Okay. Okay. And then um, there is also a in, uh, so one other point. In section 3704, there's a missing E. We go from D to F, and I didn't know if that was something. Where does it go? Did I get a different? So on page four, we four end is with D. D oh. Five is F. And we go I'm sorry. to F. Okay. So I misunderstood um, you. I'm sorry. Okay. A, B, C, D. No, I think it's just missing. Yeah. Okay. Just B, D. All right. Okay. Thank you for that consideration. You're welcome. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. There you have it, Ms. Fanson. I've got it. So we'll move on to item number four. Item number four is just a discussion regarding the form-based code. I wanted to give you an update. Um, I met with Kathleen Duffy of LSL Planning at the beginning of this month, and uh, we talked for a couple of hours, and um, she has requested information from Oakland County. She's gotten the zoning map um, from our city engineer. I actually spoke with somebody at Oakland County with regard to um, getting a map of homestead versus non-homestead properties as a way of kind of, as we were talking about, uh, multiple family in the, in the city that are um, within our neighborhoods, whether it's two families or three families or four families. And uh, so we're working on that with Oakland County. She, I asked her uh, when she thought might be ready to come before the Planning Commission as a work session, and uh, she said March would okay. be a good time. So if you want to put March 10th on your calendars. Okay, everybody, March, Mar March 10th. On your calendar, it's a Tuesday. It's the second Tuesday of the March. We'll have a work session that evening. At the same time as usual? Same time, 7.30. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Mr. Martin Smith. Amy, why why, uh, why do we want to do a work session? I mean, I, I mean, I don't care if we come here to another evening. We just don't want it on it's camera. Informal. Oh, I don't think it's so much of a matter of camera. I'm assuming that you're going to have lots of items in March. It'll be spring, and you'll have lots of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. fair so enough. So the intent was, if you know, we're going to start hashing out an ordinance, it would just be much easier to That's do. That's fine. I'm just as curious. A, as a one item thing, instead of trying yeah. to fit it in between applicants. We used to have, uh, for the new people on this board, we used to have work sessions, sessions every, every month. month. So. So. Okay. So that was that. That was why Fair I enough. suggested it. Okay. okay. And it's still a public meeting. Anybody can yeah. come. Anybody can yeah. come. It's open to the public. Yep. It absolutely is. It's just more informal. Right. Do it a little right. more. Right, and, and it's one item on the agenda yep. instead of making it item five yeah. at the end of a long night. So. Yeah, right. I can remember when we used to have drawings and boards, and we'd be rattle like, around, right. yeah. travel around yeah. the room. So. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. All right. 
Then I'll entertain any citizens' comments. Any citizen who would care to address anything else on the agenda tonight this evening, they may step up. Hearing no citizens' comments, we'll go around for liaison reports. Chamber? Chamber met on the 14th. Uh, there, since they have a, some uh, new board members and a new president and vice president, and so they're reviewing all their committees to Re reshuffle some people around in that regards. There is a blender next Monday at 5.30 at Amici's for all chamber members. Uh, and then they're planning a uh, staff appreciation event for the high school sometime in March. And uh, one of the new things they're doing now, you know, as I'm the liaison there, they, they contacted the uh, city of Huntington Woods to see about getting a maybe a planning and a council liaison and to start off with the city manager has decided to attend so she was at the, the meeting for the first time just she wanted to get a feel for it and to see if there was a need to have somebody from the different committees there so so I guess there so I found out from her that they're working on a uh, new master plan Huntington Woods mm -hmm. so so and they're trying to you know look at the complete streets thing housing for seniors community development they want to do some stuff with uh, coolidge with oak park so so i think it'll be a good uh good tie-in for us help us out so and uh that's about it bda anything you've given us a report they've that's published a report so i passed it out okay <laughs> Any comments on the meeting or anything? Nope. Mr. Richardson, anything from environmental? <clears throat> no, the January uh, meeting was uh, canceled due to a, a number of uh, conflicts, um, so I have nothing to report. And I assume nobody attended parks or rec or anything. No. We don't have any representatives there. Oh, I guess that's it. I guess I hit them all, right? Yep. CBA. Council. Council. No, I haven't got to that yet. So council meeting we met a week ago and of course the big item was for us to, was to look at the resolu this work session they added on a work session for the valet parking and they spent quite a bit of time discussing it and they wanted us and the DDA to look at it as I had previously mentioned in the meeting. Our other ordinances have had their second reading and they've all passed and so mm -hmm. we're They're in your book we're in a book so that was council council meets monday evening again and uh, i th believe they're going to tackle this again hopefully they'll have all our comments and we'll be ready to go so that is that so at this point in time i'll run around the room mr martin smith anything this evening no sir mr richardson Nothing from me. Ms. Pop? No. Mr. Morrell? Nothing at all. Murad? Mr. Morrell? Oddly enough, no. Ms. Shadow? No. Ms. Buckler? No. Mr. Tanger? No. Ms. Vance? Uh, just really quickly, just to give you an update, our um, part-time licensing clerk, Denise Vaughn, uh, quit. She got a full-time job with the City of Detroit. So. Uh, we are uh, once again shorthanded with the city. Uh, a department that's already lean and mean is uh, considerably leaner. Um, so I'm filling in with that uh, along, with, along with other things. So let you know what's going on. Okay, I don't have anything else. What do we got? Anything for February? What's, we'll have uh, the radiator hospital back, hopefully. Yes. And no one else has applied, so. No one else has applied no, for anything. No, but I do hope to have something on signage. I know we were talking about the lighting for the digital signs, and I haven't forgotten it. I just haven't. Okay. Haven't gotten to it. All righty. I don't have any other comments, so for that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, Mr. The motion is made. Motion's made. Seconded. Second, Second by Mr. Murat. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed.